Welcome back to Animated Times, Joe Todd with you. Today we're going to talk about The Worst Batman. The Worst Batman revealed, unapologetic, dark, and mysterious. These words describe the characters of DC's most favorite cape crusaders, i.e. Batman, in the true sense. Batman has been going in and out of DC movies and television shows, but the review of the character has not got any more distasteful, as compared to his recent appearance. In this video we'll be talking about the same, so bad heads are requested to keep their cool on, and smash the subscribe button instead to show their support for the channel. Let's begin. The Titans Season 2 Finale Star Batman is a very important role, only for the fans to know in the end that even Alfred would have been adequate for the job. The final episode, titled Nightwing, has received severe backlash from the Batman fanbase for portraying the character with such a weak script. Fans had feared for a long time that the Titans will somewhat ruin the character of Batman and the prediction came true. It's not the fault of the actor, neither the direction. It is the writing which made the character look pretty weak and un-Batman-ish. The Cape Crusader is played by Scottish actor Ian Glenn. As you would have guessed till now, eyebrows rose up when fans saw a Scottish actor being cast as an American billionaire. The actor is best known for his role in medieval legacy Game of Thrones as Sejora Mormont. Fans felt that Glenn was too old for the part and not the best option. The questions still persist on the crew over the decision. However, the writing of the episode made it even more unimpressive. The storyline revolves around all the prime characters of the Titans. The episode saw Connor, the Superman clone, being put up for bids by Cadmus Laboratories. Now guess who evil-minded rich genius owns this company? You probably would have guessed right if you were a hardcore DC fan. It's Lex Luthor. The corrupt company has arranged a gruesome and horrific test of their super soldier by making him go against a mind-controlled Garfield Logan after turning the so-called Beast Boy on a carnival. After showing Connor in action fighting a metahuman, the Cadmus Labs hope to drive up the bidding. Then enters Batman, who wishes to put a full stop on Luthor's heinous acts by sitting inside his Batcave. Intriguing, isn't it? Batman shuts down the digital feed of Connor fighting Garfield while making himself a cup of tea. Not so Batman-ish, right? The action of Batman raised the question that if Batman knew about the auction, then why didn't he call the Justice League or sneak into Cadmus and rescue Connor and Garfield? The most accurate answer to this was Bruce Wayne trusted the Titans to step in and save the day, but there was no guarantee that it was happening. At the time when the show revealed Cadmus customers, the Titans were still split up, and there was no hint that the team would be reuniting anytime soon. You think this is it? Wait till you hear the final twist. The point became even more confusing when it was revealed that Bruce Wayne, who was thought to have brought Dove, Donna, Troy, Starfire, and Raven together and convinced them to rejoin the Titans, was just a fragment of Raven's psychic projection. This has confirmed the idea that Titans Batman did nothing but some simple computer hacking to stop Lex Luthor from making profits. The very idea of Batman not being involved physically and not putting himself in harm's way gave away the understatement that was the worst representation of Bruce Wayne, aka Batman. What do you think about it? Do you believe that the introduction of the character was unnecessary? Put down your views in the comments below and hit the subscribe button to show your support for the channel. 